So wood turtles were the most common turtle in the state of Massachusetts. And to indicate that, in the 1800s, people recorded that they went out with their horse and buggy and in an afternoon picked up a hundred wood turtles. So they had to be extremely common. Um, and now, if we fast forward to today, almost no one in this region has ever seen a wood turtle. Well, we're in the lower Connecticut Valley in Massachusetts, and we're going to put in on this stretch of river here to uh, locate 10 transmitting wood turtles by radio telemetry. One particular technique for studying individuals in any population of large animals is to attach a radio to an individual and locate it by this process called radio telemetry. This is our receiver. You can see as I flip through the dials, every animal is assigned a number. Uh, M24 is a, is a male, F21 is a female. So knowing which animal we're looking for, I can just spin the dial to her number and I've already programmed in the frequency that she's transmitting at. This morning, hopefully before noon, we'll get about two miles of river done. Which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but we'll have logs. We have to pull the canoes over and beaver dams and whatnot. And um, it can take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour to locate each turtle. There are a lot of things about wood turtles we don't know. Far more than things about wood turtles that we do know. Having radio transmitters on turtles will allow us to catch a glimpse of their habitat requirements, the ways that they use the landscape to allow us to begin to formulate a conservation strategy for this animal. I don't see your turtle, Mike. Yeah, I think it's on the other side too. Yeah, up that trib over there. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> he's definitely <laughs> pretty close. He's, you know, within this meter, basically, that I've narrowed it down to here, although exactly where he is is tough to say. Oh, man. This is the real hard part, is doing <laughs> this last. Oh, you got him? Yeah. In the United States, the wood turtle is just one of many freshwater turtle species which is being damaged by suburban sprawl. The roadkill problem is probably the most significant because all of these homes and these malls that we associate with sprawl are connected via roads which fragment the habitat. Habitat fragmentation is when you take a large, unbroken block of habitat and you separate it into smaller pieces. Habitat varies depending on the organism that you're talking about. But for wood turtles, the habitat that we're talking about is the stream and the forested region and the meadowed regions on either side of that stream. And so it's often easiest to lay a road along the flat river bottoms where these wood turtles are found. But when the wood turtles then make a perpendicular movement from the stream to either go into the forest to go to vernal pools or to go up into the uplands to lay their eggs, they're then gonna have to cross these roads which have been laid down parallel to the streams in which they exist. And so our efforts are to locate what we think are the viable populations of wood turtles and then to describe how wide of an area these wood turtles require on either side of the streams. So we can prioritize how conservation biologists then go about saving these areas. Uh, this is F15, female number 15. She's, a, she's an adult wood turtle. Uh, we've just found her cryptic basking in, the, in this shrub area here. So doing her best to, to get some sun on her shell while staying out of sight. Um, that white ring you see around her shell is the acrylic holding her radio on. That's how we located her in the first place. What I do here is I take a GPS point, which precisely marks this location. And then I'd fill out a habitat form. So that'll tell me later exactly the canopy, shrub, herb layer here at the site, the distance that this particular animal is to water, her behavior at the time that I found her. But as time goes by, these records will pile up. And when I finally look at it all at the end of the season, 
We'll have her whole home range on tape. We try to get every turtle at least twice a week. Best case scenario is three times a week. Then there's a smaller chance that we'll miss some huge movement away from the river and back. Today, wood turtle populations are difficult to assess and identify because individuals are hard to come across. We've been lucky so far. We've handled 73 animals, which is far more than we thought we would have by this point. But even so, we've surveyed several rivers and found no evidence of any wood turtles at all, even though the habitat is identical to, to other sites at which we're working and finding several animals. So it'll probably take this entire year and, and most of the next to, to really get our hands around why the wood turtles are very scarce, probably absent at some of these sites, and uh, apparently fairly common at others. My hope for this study is that we will actually be able to identify almost all of the wood turtle populations that we need to have as a high priority for preserving by the Massachusetts Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program. I don't think that we're ever going to return to that time where wood turtles are the most common turtle in the state of Massachusetts. But we may be able to, through some very creative management, preserve those populations that we are lucky enough to still have left before suburban sprawl removes those last remaining populations from the landscape.